Welcome back to the episode 5.8 of our video course Parallel Programming and Optimization with Intel Xeon FICO processors. We are continuing the discussion on optimization and now moving on to the optimization of thread parallelism. Earlier we talked about optimization that happens on the level of one vector lane, scalar optimization. Then we spent some time learning about optimization of vectorization. Now we move into a higher level of parallelism and considering what happens across the multiple cores of our processor. Why is thread parallelism difficult, especially with Intel Xeon FICO processors? First of all, you have to have enough parallelism to keep all cores busy. On Intel Xeon processors, your application must use tens of threads and on Xeon Phi it must be hundreds of threads to take advantage of core parallelism. With this many threads, it is important to keep thread synchronization to a minimum because serializing even a tiny fraction of a parallel application can reduce its efficiency dramatically, according to Amdahl's law. Another challenge is memory overhead. If you have a fixed per thread memory overhead, then going from tens of threads on Xeon to hundreds of threads on Xeon Phi, you are going to deal with a greater memory requirement, and at the same time you have less memory available on Xeon Phi than you do on Xeon. Optimization of thread parallelism often overlaps with other areas of optimization. For instance, data locality control in multi-threading improves memory traffic, and some techniques that were discussed for multi-threading allows it to coexist with vectorization. The first topic we will discuss on the subject of multi-threading is minimizing synchronization. Our discussion will apply to a very common pattern of parallel computations – reduction. In episode 5.6, we optimized an example application which performs binning of people ages and computes the age distribution. A quick reminder, our input data is a large array age, containing ages of people from 0 to 100 years. For each person we find their age group by dividing their age by 20 years and rounding the result down to an integer. Then we increment the histogram being corresponding to that age group. To partially vectorize this calculation we use strip mining, and we also split the loop into two loops, one performing only vector calculations and the other performing only scalar calculations. Now our task is to parallelize this calculation across multiple threads, which will give us access to multi-core and many-core parallelism. We will do it using parallel framework OpenMP, which we discussed earlier in this course. We can begin by parallelizing the loop in ii across multiple threads. To do this, we insert the statement pragmamp parallel 4 before the loop. Ignore the scheduling clause for the moment. The result will be a parallel application. However, if we compile and run this code, we will quickly see that this application is not only very slow, but it is also incorrect. The histogram produced by this parallel code is vastly different from the histogram produced by the single-threaded code. Furthermore, the results will be different from run to run. This happens because in the loop in C we have a race condition. Different threads are going to be written into the array hist shared across all threads. As a reminder, this array is only 5 elements long, it contains the number of people in the age groups 0 to 20 years, 20 to 40, 40 to 60, 60 to 80, and 80 to 100 years. At the same time, on Xeon Phi we have hundreds of threads, so we can expect numerous events where different threads read and update this array concurrently, leading to unpredictable results. As we learned earlier in this course, to protect race conditions we have to use mutexes. We could try a simple approach, just before the increment operation we will put the statement pragmamp atomic. With this statement, OpenMP will use the hardware support for atomic updates to guarantee that the result of all parallel updates are correct. This will happen of course at the cost of partially serializing our application. How significant is this going to be? We have one synchronization event for every element in array age. So, if we have for example n equals to 100 billion, then we will have 100 billion atomic updates. We will see in a few slides that the resulting performance will be very disappointing. So we must search for a way to use fewer synchronization events. Let's change this strategy for coordinating threads. Instead of allowing each thread to directly modify a shared container, let's give each thread its own container for the age distribution. 
we will aggregate, or in other words, reduce the results of different threads only at the very end of the calculation. This diagram illustrates this strategy for a different workload that also performs reduction. Here we are computing the sum of all integers from 101 to 600 in 5 threads. Each thread accumulates its partial sum and at the end we can use atomic updates to reduce the results from all threads into a common container. This way we have only as many atomic operations as we have threads. Now let's apply this strategy to our bidding application. The code will now look like this. We will start a parallel region using Pragmo MP Parallel. Each thread will execute the code in lines 3, 4 and 5. So each thread will get a private initialized copy of ray hist and ray index. Then we will start the parallel loop using Pragma OMP4 without the word parallel. Inside of this loop we will do our vectorized index calculation and histogram increments, but we will increment the thread private container instead of the shared one. Finally, the parenthesis in line 13 ends the parallel loop, but we are still inside the parallel region. So, every thread will run the loop in lines 14, 15 and 16, in which we are add the result from the current thread to the global result. This procedure is called parallel reduction. This approach works well when the thread private containers are not very large. Note that if the reduction variable is a scalar rather than an array, then you can use the built-in OpenMP functionality for reduction using the clause reduction. This chart shows the performance results. Our baseline in this case is the performance of the partially vectorized code that we produced when we were optimizing vectorization. The second set of bars is our attempt to parallelize this code across threads and use the atomic pragma inside of the innermost loop. You can see that the performance not only did not improve, it actually was worse than in the single-threaded case. Finally, the third set of bars is the performance with thread private containers used to decrease the number of atomic operations. The performance boost compared to the single-threaded implementation is a factor of one order of magnitude on the CPU and two orders of magnitude on Xeon Phi. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below the video. In the next episode, we will talk about very interesting topic of false cache line sharing. Thank you for tuning in, and I hope to see you in the next episode.